Okay, great. So, here we are, 929. <clears throat> we can go ahead and check the syllabus on Freer School. And we go down to array lists. We'll do more examples about array lists. So, <clears throat> nice, now we have real good, real good attendance. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I, I, I had, a, had a funny thought. Um, I was thinking how, like, the, the way I take attendance is I just do a little screenshot of, of who's here on the, um, the voice chat. And I thought that it... It could be done by a bot, right? Like, like you, somebody writes a bot that just at a certain time logs them in to the voice channel and then logs them out of the voice channel here on, on Discord. Because I don't really, like, cold call on people. Like, if, if I call on somebody because I think that they might know the answer and they're not there, I could say, oh, they're, in, they're at the restroom, this, that. Like, it's... It's more I, I react to students messaging here rather than like me calling on students, which other other instructors do, and like there's there's benefits to it. Like might maybe might get some quieter students less likely to type to type something. But but if a student did make a Discord bot and they were able to like log themselves in and log themselves out, the the thing is, they'd be so good at programming, they really don't even need this class, right? Because they're they're already doing... Ah, the connection is dropping. Hmm. Let's see. Are others having that problem? Hmm. Because the, the interesting thing about, like, the connection dropping is um, it used to really slow up this computer to do a screen recording and stream at the same time. So that was one of the other motivations to not do the recording. That coupled with the fact that most students did not check it after class was over was what really made me stop doing it. So um, if my computer is breaking up, um, I can, I could, I guess I could, well, other, other people are saying it's not breaking up, so it might just be the internet connection, but, um, oh, it's good now, okay. Oh, another funny thing happened, so anyways, I'll just finish up that story about making the Discord, but the, the thing is, the whole point of these classes is to get you to a point where you can do productive, positive things with computer programming. And um, like people who can make a Discord bot and follow the the API and all the configuration issues, like that's 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 pretty pretty high level, right? Like that's putting you on on a good path towards being very productive in this world. So you really you really want to think about this time here not as just like a chore, oh, now I have to click on the voice chat, and then I have to leave the voice chat. Really just look at it as a time. We're here from 7 to 8.40. We can practice, write code, share, ask questions, think of interesting things to do. So I think maybe like the way people look at a class should change, not like it's just some, some obligation you have to click through, because in the end, you do get all your grades from the things you turn in and the tests. Like, I don't give grades based on, on participation, but I've always seen that the students who participate the most really do the best. So it's, it's nice to see that this class does have people who are showing up at this time. I was afraid it was going to be, be like two people in the live stream at, you know, like when I saw it was at 7 a.m. That was always my my fear about like running a class so early but 
okay, people people do show up now, and there's good participation. Like whenever I ask students to do live coding, I always get I always get messages and comments. So that's that's really really good. All right, so um, getting back to the the question about like putting the videos up, I did put the video up last class, and I made a YouTube playlist, and I, I think I'd like to continue. Yes, I like that. A cup of Java. Like it, it works on different levels. So we have here under my account, we have my channel, and we have a new playlist. So this playlist is called Java AM. All right. So th this is what it's going to look like with this playlist. Oh no no no! I um I. I took this over from another instructor, so I we instructor people at Miami they do have some control over when the when the classes are scheduled. It's not it's not as much like you know a high school where you have to be 7:20 to 2:20. Like there's there's no question, but um, there was there was another instructor and something just I don't know they needed to move on or, or whatever happened I don't even know they um, they just needed me to teach it and I really enjoy teaching Java so one thing that that I do like about um, having different instructors at a place like Miami-Dade can Miami-Dade College Kendall campus is um, if if you like have have me with a class and maybe there's something that just you really didn't enjoy like I don't know you didn't like discord or whatever like you didn't like you don't like the way I speak and I like having different instructors to teach the class because then like okay they don't enjoy being in my class so then they just go to the other class mm -hmm. so with Java right now in person I think I'm the only person at Miami-Dade College Kendall who teaches it in person C++ we have other instructors Python I alternate with another instructor um, but yeah, for this particular time, they really needed me to take over. So in this case, no, I didn't. I didn't pick it this early. I am pretty much enjoying it. I don't mind the time. So, so I'll, I'll maybe do it in the future. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I'd like to continue putting these videos up on the the playlist. So if there is something you wanted to check, like you could make that into a habit of checking. And there we go. So. I see it, it does have two views, so it's not completely hidden away. All right, although one of those is probably for me, just checking it after I uploaded it. Okay, so let's go here to Java ArrayList. And ArrayLists are definitely, definitely important to talk about. So the way that I like to introduce them is ArrayLists are like vectors from your C++ class. And sometimes there are students who don't encounter vectors, but usually most encounter vectors. The simplest way of putting it is just, this is an array that can be resized. Okay? So the array can be resized. And if we look here on W3Schools, it says the size of an array cannot be modified, but you can add and remove elements from the array list whenever you want. Okay, mm -hmm. the syntax is different. This this you've got to understand. The syntax takes time to get used to. First, you need to have an import. The import statement needs to be towards the top of the file, right? And then. After you import, you can use this code right here to make an array list. All right, so now we have an array list of strings. We can only add strings to this array list. We're putting inside the angle brackets the type of object we can add. So if you don't put any angle break, uh, angle brackets then it's just going to allow you to add 
whatever you want to the array list. But generally, you want to be specific and and limit what people can add. So, how do you add? Well, let's look at some code. Here we see adding three different types of cars to the array list. Okay, so we're adding a Volvo, a BMW, a Ford, and a Mazda. Now we have, well, four, I think I said three, but we have four types of cars in this array list. Then we want to access an element. Well, you have to use .get to get the data out. You use .get to get the data out. So, if you want to get the first car, which is the Volvo, you use .get0. Now, what if you want to change an item? Well, if you want to change an item, you can use .set. So, you can see I'm pretty much following the website on W3Schools exactly, the web page exactly. The first item you send in is going to be the element. Then the second is going to be the name. All right, we see a student typing out a question, so let's... Oh, yeah, 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 it does. It does. It lets you, it lets you work inside, just kind of like with REPL. So, yeah, an online IDE. <clears throat> So we have here run, <clears throat> it is, W3 School is a really cool site. <clears throat> we can see here we've got Opal, BMW, Ford, and you know, we can, we can change different things like maybe, maybe let's try to, let's try to remove one, <clears throat> so we say cars.remove0. And then we can, oops, print this out again. So we added, we changed, we removed. And we see that all these changes are reflected inside of this um, array list, right? You couldn't remove from an array. Oh, okay. What if you wanted to set a parameter of the array list? So you mean like if you have if you have an object where you want to change a particular element? Well, you would you would just have to call you would have to call the object and then the setter. So we could go make an example like that. No, you are you are changing how big it is when you when you remove. You are. Like if I was to print out the length or the size of the cars before we remove and then the size of the car after we remove. Okay, so before it was four and then it's three. So yeah, it just it just rearranges everything. So if we if we want to get the first item after calling Calling this, we would say system.out.printline cars.get0. Right, 
right? So now the first item is BMW, right? Because we deleted this, we deleted this Opal that we changed from Volvo. So yeah, the syntax is totally different from the normal array. Like it's just one of those things you have to memorize. So um, this this is like maybe something to make a note card for, but this syntax is different from arrays. All right, so let's let's do that example that a student requested. What if you wanted to change a parameter of the array list? So let's go here to Java, and we'll make just a random name. We'll say create REPL. And we'll go ahead and make a class. We'll say class A. And A is going to have, well, it's got to have space first. And A is going to have um, int I. And then we can say here public a int i this dot i equals i and then we can have a setter public void set i int i this dot i equals i all right so we'll just make this pretty standard class that we've been making since the beginning and now we are going to go ahead and we are going to make an array list. So we'll just do the import. Import java.util.arraylist. And then we can make the array list in here. Array list of A's. AL equals new array list. And now we're going to say al.new. And we want to add, well, not new yet. We got to say dot add new A. And we'll make one with five. And then we are going to do, we want to change this, right? So we can say here, al dot get zero. And then we can say, we can say with this get zero, we want to set i to be 100. And then we can make a two string here that says public string two string. And we'll say return this a has an i of, and then we'll just say plus this dot i. So now we're, we changed the i to be 100, and then we're going to call this two string. So we'll say al.get0. Okay, so let's run it. And we see this a has an i of 0. So the question was about, like, how do you change a parameter? Well, you have to access, you have to access the, the particular element in the array list and then call the setter. So this this would be the syntax to do that sort of question. So if you just wanted to look at this code here in Discord, that's the Discord code. All right, but you can call setters, things like that. Okay, great. Now, the best way to get good at this sort of thing is to actually do some examples. So what I'd like you to do is ask a user for their favorite programming language and keep asking them until they enter Q. Okay, keep asking until they enter Q. And then, then store the programming languages in an array list and show 
the user the languages they entered, right, after Q is typed. So this is going to involve a loop. This is going to involve a lot of important stuff, right? So I want you to work on this, send it to me as you finish, and then we'll share it together. Okay, you guys ready for me to move the car out? from his dad in.
Okay, so um, students are finishing as well as running into a few errors. Um, so, yep, another student just finished. Great. How about somebody who has broken code? Share it right now, and and then I can fix it, and then we can learn something from it. So, somebody go ahead and share some broken code. And it, it's, uh, you know, everybody's learning here. So I think there's some benefit to sharing broken code rather than me just typing it from scratch because then we can see, okay, here we have something. Let's take a look at this. So we can go ahead and copy this and we'll just make a new REPL. And we'll just take the anonymous name they give. That's fine. And then we can go here and we can say, all right, we've got our imports. We've got an array list of strings. And then we've got what is your favorite language? And we really want to put this, what is your favorite language inside of the loop? So that's the first change I'm going to make. And then we really only need one loop for this. So we can, we can take this out and we can take this out and we can move this one down here. And we're saying while the favorite language doesn't equal doesn't equal Q, but we compare strings with Java with dot equals. So we change it to dot equals. And we say we continue while it's not equal. So we put the logical not. And then we go ahead and run it here. And we see we still got errors. So this goes with this, and then this goes with this. And so there was an extra curly brace in there, probably from the for loop that I didn't erase. And then we can move this over. That looks a little nicer. And this whole public static void main we can move over. And now that looks good. So we go like this, we go like this, and we really don't need these extra lines. So let's try to run this. What is your favorite language? I love Java, Python. Okay, so we have a problem here. We have two, oh, I see. We're putting in another next line. So we need to put in here favorite language. Okay, so we have to put in here favorite language, and and then the funny thing is we will be adding in, we will be adding in a Q. So we'll say something like, what is your favorite language? Enter Q to quit. So what we can do after we run through all this is we can just remove the last element. So we can say language.remove and we can just take the language dot size minus one because it starts at zero and then we'll just print it out for everybody to see so we'll say system dot out dot print line language and then we'll run it and we got more problems um oh because ah it's a naming structure favorite underscore language okay and then we go back here to run it. What is your favorite language? I like Java, Python, C++, quit. Okay, Java, Python, C++. So here we have a working solution. And I think some people have been typing. Let's see. Um, somebody says, it seems like a post-test, maybe pre-test. So there's different ways that you could, you could deal with this. Like what you could do is you could just say in here, if they enter Q, then just don't put it in, right? You can either stop, 
stop Q from going into the array list here with an if statement, or you could just add it and then remove it here. I removed it after adding it. As long as you keep track of where you get rid of your, um, like where you deal with this Q, you'll be okay. Sure, sure. And, and I really am a big fan of live coding where you try something and then if you mess up, you share it. I take it from there. And, and I like short problems that have a start, a middle and an end. And that way, you know, during our class time, we can really zero in on something, you know, because um, if we're only like talking about coding and we're not actually doing coding, I just don't think it's as beneficial, right? So I appreciate the students who were messaging me and I get that there were probably students who were working and just didn't get close enough to where they wanted to send it to me. Um, we are now at 745. So I, you know, I do have to unfortunately cut these things a bit short. So, um, but you will get faster if you keep, oh, okay, great question. If the Q is lowercase, it won't stop. That's a great question. So if we say here, enter Q to quit, Q to quit, it will put in these two, two lowercase Qs. But Java has a really cool method pre-built for uh, strings. You can say equals ignore case. So if you use equals ignore case, then Java will be able to Java will be able to deal with a lowercase. So if we say what is your favorite language Q, now they don't have any they don't have any um, issue stopping. Okay, excellent. So I think we can go ahead and leave this example behind us. I think I'm hearing something that probably accidentally unmuted, but all right, let's see. All right. Okay, so back to the array list. We can remove, oh, you can clear everything from the array list. You can find out how many elements the array list has using size. And this is important. How do you visit every element of the array list? Well, if you look here, I don't, I don't make a loop to print everything out. I just print out, okay, print out the language, but there are times you're going to want to visit every element of the array list. So there's two, two main ways you can do that using a for loop. You can say for int i equals zero while i is less than size i plus plus system.out.println cars.get i. Or if you need to change something about the cars, you can change something about the cars with set. But if you know you want to visit every element inside the array list, you might want to use a for each. Okay? For eaches are less code. And they're logically, they make a lot of sense. You're saying, okay, make up this variable string i. String i is a new variable. And you're saying, visit every element in cars. Put the element inside the I, and then let's do something with it. We can print it. We can do whatever we want. It's shorter. You don't have to make the counter and move along like that. And for each is used a lot. For each is used a lot. Okay. So let's move on. What if you want to work with numbers? You can't use a primitive. You can't say array list of type int. That will not compile. If you say array list of int, it just won't work. You have to use the class integer. Okay. 
you have to use the wrapper class integer. Um, well, okay, so if you're combining those two, then you would make a class. Then you would make a new class. Then you would make a new class of like type type um, whatever you want like int string int string you know and then you would just add those things and we could do that together right all right so let's go ahead and do that together so we go here we say new create rebel and then we are going to just make a Java and create it here okay so let's make a new class we can call it class int string and int string is going to be made up of int i and string s and we can just go ahead and make a constructor because it's good practice public int string int i string s this dot i equals i this dot s equals s And then we'll make a two string because why not? Public string two string. Return. And then we'll return this. Okay. So. Here we go, int string. Uh, oh, we want to make, well, got to import array list. So we'll say import uh, java.util.arraylist. And there we go. And then down here we can say, all right, let's make a new array list. Array list of int string. And we'll call this um, array list, right? We can call it whatever we want. New array list. And then we can, you'll notice that the second type is optional in newer Java. So I could put int string on both sides, but I also don't have to. And why don't we just make some random words here? And let's see. Let's see, how can we, is there a built-in dictionary? Where can we get a built-in dictionary? So Java get random word from dictionary. Let's see. But I want to find the easiest way to get to a dictionary. Let's see. Um, well, they're just randomly making words. Yeah, I don't want. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, I guess we could do this. Yeah, we could do this. Let, let me just copy everything from here. Yeah, that's probably the easiest thing. So then we'll just go back here. Actually, then you can see me read from a file, which is pretty easy. Wordlist.txt. So, wow, it's almost 70,000 words. So, pretty amazing how fast computers are. You know, like, imagine what it would take somebody to just copy all those words. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to loop through and read in some, some random words. So let me make a file reader. I'm just jumping ahead and showing you how you can can read in things. 
So to do that, use a file reader. So import java.io. IO stands for input output. And this file reader will say fr equals new file reader. And the file is going to be wordlist.txt. And then here we're going to have to say it throws a file not found exception because the file might not be there. Okay. So let's see here. So let's go ahead and let's pick one of these random words as we're going through. So let's run this 10 times. So we'll say for int i equals 0, while i is less than 10, i plus plus. Now, we'll, we'll get the word first. We'll get the word first. So we'll go through and we'll say um, fr dot, hmm, let's see, should we read them in first or just randomly pick pick one from somewhere in here. Let's see. File reader. Hmm. What's the best way to do this quickly? Let's see. So we have our file reader and we can maybe let, maybe let me try to read in Maybe let me try to read in everything into an array list of strings. Call this words equals new array list. And we'll say while fr dot. Hmm. Yeah, it's just reading in ints here. File reader. All right, let me see something. Java file reader read one line let's see oh buffered reader yeah 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 of course i forgot i forgot you're supposed to like surround it by something better so let me change this to a buffered reader so you have to send your file reader to a buffered reader and that makes it a lot easier to work with to work with things like files so here I'm going to say while buffered reader read line is not null, then I'm going to just keep putting everything into this array list. Okay, so I'm going to say words dot add, and we'll say br dot read line. Okay, so I'm just going through and I'm adding in everything. And it says there is an IO exception, so we have to throw the IO exception. Okay, looks good. And then after we're done, we can close this buffered reader, br.close. Okay, so now we have all the words in this giant file inside this array list. And then I can just randomly pick from them and randomly make a random number to add to this other array list that we have so we can say array list dot add and we're going to add a new class int int string right new int string so the i the integer part we can just do from math dot random and we can say um, times 100 and then we can just convert that into an int like that that sounds reasonable and then for this s what we want to do is we want to randomly pick it from this array list of words so we can say words dot get and this is where the number is going to get really big because um, we have like 60 almost 70,000 things in there. So we can say math.random times, I don't know, we'll just go through 60,000. And 
that looks like it should work, but there's only one way to find out to see if it works. We have to go through and visit all of the all of these different crazy words that we've made and crazy numbers. So let's make a, a for loop. We could say for, and this is called int, int string i within array list. We're just going to print out all the i's. So we say system.out.println i. Okay, so let's let's run this and see if it works. And this is a little bit off with the like this. This needs to be over. So we have to just highlight the the code and indent it. So let's indent it a little bit. And that looks good. Okay. So let's run it and see if it works. We run it and we have a problem because look, it's always giving us the same it's always giving us the same thing here. It's giving us a horizon, a horizon, a horizon. Hmm. So are we getting all these different words? Let's print out words. System.out.println words. Let's see if the words are all correct. Okay, we're getting all the words. That's not a problem. Although there is one that's null. Why is that? Maybe we have an empty line at the end. Do we have an empty line? No. Hmm. We do have one that's null. There must be an empty line in there somewhere. Okay. Oh, we don't have to worry about that now. Here, we're always getting a horizon because random is always the same. Hmm. Like I need to seed it. Let's see. Random times 60. Let's see. Let's let's try that. Mm, what's the problem here? Um, 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 um math dot random times words dot size. Let's see here. Oh, perfect. Good. Thank you. Yes. Good. Good eye, good catch. So now we're able to make these crazy words with different things from a dictionary, and we're able to we're able to have random random numbers. So we now have random numbers and random words, and it it. You know, I obviously went kind of fast through the file reader, buffered reader. We're going to spend more time on it later. This was just to make it a little bit more of an interesting example. Um, also, we do get to see how math.random. Yeah, thanks, thanks. It was it was um, something I did. I did try to go quickly just so we wouldn't be spending a lot of time on it. But um, like the idea is, how do you combine an int and a string? I really love the question because. That's really what classes are all about. Classes, classes are all about adding two or three or more different data types together. You know, before you have your integer or you have your string. Now you have them together. So we're saying, look, to make an int string, you have to send the int, you have to send the string. Now, why? Well, I mean, because we are doing something that needs a number and it needs a word. So I didn't even know this was a word. A, a pal. A pal. So, veg, vaginitis, that sounds like a medical issue. Prometheum, westerly. You know, okay, nobody knows what this word means. This is, this is too crazy of a word. <laughs> If somebody knew what that meant offhand, that would be like the, the, the most odd thing. So um, now we've combined the two things and now they're together. Okay, great. So let's go back to our array list. We can close this. 
and we can see, ah, sorting the array list. This is one of the most useful things that you can do. Collections.sort really quickly can sort your data for you. Now, collections.sort is not going to know how to sort the class we just made unless we told Java how to compare one int string with another int string. If we told it that, then yeah, it could sort the collections. But it can sort strings. It can put Volvo, BMW, Ford, and Mazda in alphabetical order just naturally because uh, it's been coded to do that, right? Sorting strings is really, really common. So you see the B, the F, the M, and the V. How you use that is just use, you use collections.sort. Okay, and then we scroll down. Sorting an array list of integers, you add all these numbers. So we had 33, 15, 20, etc. And now they're sorted from 8 through 34. And all you do is you just call collections.sort. So really, really useful to organize your data. Okay. And we are at the end of the Java array list. Okay. So we finished with this Java array list. Any overall questions about the array list or things you want to talk about? Any thoughts about the array list? Okay, well, um, in the interest of time, of course, we had to go through this a little bit quickly so you can refer to it again and do the examples again. You're going to need some repetition to do this. Like, if, if you think you can learn coding quickly, it's not the case. Coding takes time. So just refer back to this link, and now we can close it. Now we can close it. And let's go look at our things that are due. So we have a code review this week, and I did say to pick from at least level seven. So I've gotten a few messages from students that they've encountered really hard level seven problems. Well, you can always skip the level seven problem that you think is too hard. I mean, listen, I will encounter level seven problems on Code Wars where I like to do live coding in front of the class, right? Like I enjoy doing this in person, uh, MDC live like this, whatever. And sometimes I get a level seven problem and I read it and I say, this thing is not easy. It's very challenging. The wording is challenging. The syntax is going to be challenging. I'm not doing this in front of a class in a few minutes. Like it's going to really require me to think and plan and it's, it's not going to be pretty, right? Like I can't, I can't do this one. So I'll just switch it and go on to the next one. Now it doesn't happen that often. I think most of the level seven problems are very doable, but if you encounter something where you're just totally lost, you don't know what they're asking, you can just pick a different one, right? So I thought we could just look at Code Wars now and talk about that. So let's go here to Kata and we'll pick, I don't know, we'll sort it by popularity and go to Java. And then we can pick level seven. And I'll just say Kata I have not trained on so there's 85 oh of course pandemic um let's 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 look at pandemia let's see what pandemia is about okay so i just picked a level seven problem everybody it's on their mind pandemia so let's look at pandemia so we've got a string 
and we've got uninfected and infected people and then we've got oceans the virus can't spread in the other side of the ocean if one person is infected oh god every person in this continent gets infected too although that might end up happening with this virus i mean it seems kind of likely that everybody's getting it i don't know your task is to find the percentage of human population that got infected in the end return the percentage of the total population that got infected the first and last continent are not connected okay so we're going to need a loop okay okay um so what was the hardest part about it in in your opinion what was the hardest part because i'm i'm with you it's it's not like a joke problem it's not like you know add two plus two or something Wow, a lot of people have worked on this kata. Oh yeah, I, I have followed this person here before. They, um, <laughs> look, look how many of them they've done. They've done 7,000 of these problems on the site. So they're in the top 0.002% of code wars. Now that's that's some serious dedication to the site right there like they're always always solving and they do have a github and they they do weird stuff how funny they they work on on uh, niche programming languages and I don't know so maybe they have like uh, uh, an important job somewhere but they just want to stay like totally anonymous on code wars i mean i i just went ahead and put my real info like this is my name this is where i teach blah 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 but anyways let's let's get back to here this person's totally anonymous blind for basics um so if we click here on train we can see that we're gonna have to loop through here and we have, oh, you know what we can do? I just thought of an easy way we can start this. We we can we can split it based on the ocean, right? We can split it based on the ocean because here we have the whole world and each continent is separated by oceans. So let's let's go ahead and split it based on oceans. So we can say this is going to be continents equals input dot split and we're splitting based on the oceans and now we can loop through all the continents we can say okay for each continent within continents if the continent contains just a single person who's infected then we need to we need to count that as an entire entire infection right everybody is going to get it once one person gets it they're they're going to get it right so we need to keep the total population and total population we'll start it at zero and then we'll have int infected infected population equals zero so if it does contain one then we are going to in increment the infected population infected population plus equals we can say c dot length and for each time we are going to have the total population increase total population plus equals c dot length and then at the very end we're going to take the total population we're going to take the infected population and divide it by the total population and multiply it by 100. so we'll return 
infected population divided by total population and we'll just multiply this by a hundred and we just go here times 100 and also they want it as a double so we have to convert this to a double first double and I think just to make absolutely sure sometimes I go crazy with the parentheses it probably looks ugly but just to make sure I want to make sure that's a double then divide by the total population then multiply and I think they're just saying if oh look if there's no ocean then we just need to check check to see if there is one right so if the input um, doesn't contain an ocean right if the input does not contain an ocean then we just want to say we want to say if input contains the infected person then return 100 percent else return else return zero percent else return zero percent right because nobody has it nobody's getting it so this this is the way of dealing with the no ocean issue and then if there are oceans we'll split it and we'll check it so one way to find out if we're on the right track we just have to go down here to test and it is passing four and failing one okay so it says here oh if it's all oceans this is funny if it's all oceans it needs to return not a number so okay so how do we deal with that we say if if input count if the count of oceans is equal to the input length then we just need to return 0, 0.0 so that <laughs> i never would have thought of them only sending in oceans so let's let's try that and do 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 okay it doesn't like it doesn't like count um so i'm getting my i'm getting my syntax messed up here so how many times can something be found in a string let's see string count java let's look it up uh let's see let's see here let's check this and let's see recursion regular expressions Let's see. I thought there was something built in in Java. Java string API. Let's go look. So we go to the Java string API and we see string character at contains copy value of equals format get byte get characters of index of hmm last index of matches replace split value of value of maybe I'm thinking of Python that has an easy way to count that might be yeah I think I'm thinking of Python actually sometimes you get different languages mixed up so we can just go through and count X's we can make a new variable count X and we could say for int I equals zero while I is less than this input dot length I plus plus and we'll say we'll say if the current if the current element in the string if input that substring zero excuse me i plus i plus one if that equals x which is the ocean 
we'll just count x incremented by 1. And at the end, we're going to say, if count x equals input.length, then we need to return 0. So this is in the odd event, the odd event, only oceans are sent in. So it's like some ocean world. Oceans are sent in to the problem, which is not something I was considering to be sent in, but that's why these tests are so much fun. So, okay, now we pass the first level of tests. Then we hopefully pass the second level. Very good. So now we can copy this and paste it here. And we can look to see how other people solved it. So now is when we feel very, very, um, like, shamed. So let's see the short solutions people have done. Let's take a look here. So here we see, yep, what a nice, what a nice um, way of doing it with streams. I love streams, but I'm just not as good at streams as regular programming. But let's talk through this. So you turn the string into a stream, right? They did the same thing we did, splitting it on the X, dividing up the world into the oceans. Then you make a filter. Okay, give me all the S's that contain one. Find all the infected continents. Then, ah, hold on. Then, okay, so then you sum it up and this is pretty cool here. You go ahead and you check to see all the elements that don't have that don't have any X, right? And then you count it. And look at this use of the ternary operator here. We're saying, all right, you either give zero or you are going to give 100 times the result of this stream up here divided by global. So, there, yeah, leave it open. So here, this is some really neat functional programming. We're going to have a lesson on functional programming, but isn't that pretty cool? The the syntax, cool syntax Java has now. Right? You can you can tell good looking code just by looking at it. I mean, I think that, that a student who's who's expressing a desire for, for good looking code like that, I think that's a huge, huge uh, plus. I, I'm gonna give this one a, a clever upvote. I like that. Um, oh, this one used regular expressions. Regular expressions are pretty cool. Regular expressions are cool. And let's see what another solution used. Here, this is kind of like mine, but I think it's a little nicer than mine because they're just replacing things and it looks a little shorter than mine. And that's, I mean, every, everyone seems shorter than mine, but they all, oh no, this one, this one's mine because <laughs> you can tell it's longer so but this guy's is poor girls is pretty similar to it anyways the whole point is once you finish a problem with code wars you can you can like see other solutions now it may take you a long time to do these at first right so you may have to spend hours doing some of these problems at first but that's how everybody learns. Everybody learns by doing things and, and racking their head. Okay, look, look what happened to me during that problem. I had to look up, is there something count? I was mixing up Python and Java. That, that type of stuff will happen if you learn a lot of languages. You're trying to use one thing when you don't really have, have the knowledge of, uh, like, you don't remember exactly how to use it. So hopefully that was pretty useful, and I think there's a lot I could write up. If I was writing that up, I'd talk about how the um, 
the, the Python function was coming to my head, something like that. So we can go ahead and close that. And next week's code review is going to be a little bit different. Um, instead of just doing a regular code review, what I, what I have you guys doing for next week is I have you doing a code review review. So this is just like upcoming for next week, but I want you to list out all of your code reviews that you've done in one document just so you can really see the growth through all these weeks. So you either copy and paste the previous code reviews or you merge them if you've been using PDFs, whatever is easier for you. But you just make one single code review of all the code reviews. And then you give me your coding bat profile and you give me your code review, uh, code wars profile. And I show you in all these instructions how to do it. And then you just submit it to Freer School. So you won't be doing any coding next week for the code review. You're just putting everything together. And then the big grand finale is just write a paragraph of how you feel you're progressing from the beginning up through the weeks until now, right? So I'll remind you about this again next week. I just sort of wanted to give you like um, a sneak peek into my thought process. And I think it will probably take maybe less time than doing the, the coding, but I do want to see like how people uh, feel once they put it all together. It's just basically a reflection about the code reviews. So that's that's for next week. And um, let's let's open it up to questions right now. So that's that's a lot of talking. So questions you have. And the other thing to remind you of is if you go to Memer, you can see that there is the mile per gallon program. Shoot. Wait, but I thought that, wait, this isn't right. I thought I had to open up the other thing. Okay, hold on one second here. Yes, yes, yes. This is the one. Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let's go back here. Nobody typed any questions out. So I thought I had already opened the 
the items on Memer for some reason about array lists, but let's take a look here. So there's there's five questions here about arrays and array lists. And the first question is, what will the value of R2, the third element in the array, be after this code executes? So you just have to think through what's going to happen with this array, right? So I guess it makes sense that I didn't open it up last class. So this is the memer assignment for the week, right? And sum is multiple choice, and then this is multiple choice right and then this is a coding problem and this is a really good coding problem because it's all about how to calculate a figures figure skating competition like what's the score so the short dance is worth 25 percent the free skate is worth 50 percent the partner dance is worth 10 percent the original performance is worth 10 uh, 15 percent so they give you an array and they want to make sure it's a float, not a double, so they put the Fs on it. Okay, so an array of floats. And then you have to write the code that's going to calculate what the final score is for this figure skating competition. So it's a really good problem and it makes you think a little bit. It's one of those nice ones that you get to run the tests right here. You don't have to upload files or anything like that, which is a good skill, but it takes a little bit of time so you'll do all your coding inside here which is nice and then this is a fun problem this is where you keep reading in they say vector but vector and array list are the same thing you keep reading in values and you are going to figure out which number was most entered in right so if you enter in 42 nine times and no other number was entered nine times that's the obvious winner but what if two numbers were both entered in the same number of times like let's say 42 was entered nine times and 41 was entered nine times well in that case you just pick the highest number right so you just compare if if they both had the same number of times entered in then you just pick the highest number all right that's a, that's a good challenging problem. That'll force you to think a bit. And then we go here to question five. And question five is all about running an election. So everybody is going to have a unique ID for when they can vote. But they think some people might have voted twice, right? So election, election security is really, really important. Whether you're doing a local club or you're running the presidential election. Write a program to read in member IDs and check to see, are there any repeated values? If an ID has already been used, you say, look, this, this has already been counted. This ID has already been counted. And just like today, didn't we do an example? Yeah, this is due on Sunday, due on Sunday. So if you read in stop, you have to stop. OK, once you get to stop, you, you just do not continue because you can't you can't continue. So this is a really, really fun problem. You have to check to see. Did they already enter this? And if they did, then you don't you don't count it twice. Right. Think about all the issues with January 6th and how how President uh, Trump was saying this isn't fair. This isn't right. So they went to the courts and then the courts said, look, we think that the votes were count. I mean, this whole huge political thing that people still have issues over, like it's, it's a giant, giant problem about how you count people who have already voted, right? It's, it's so important. So this is like a great intersection of computer programming and a real world issue that like even does matter on something like a school club because you know for your school club you don't want people to be able to vote twice so i think this is one of my favorite problems for students to work on and you know um forces you to think a little bit but um yeah that's that and i had 
seeing that the miles per gallon had really good participation, there's only five students who didn't do miles per gallon. So that's good. Very few students didn't do it. And that's that. So, okay, now you see your Freer School homework, Freer School homework, and then you see your Memer homework. And now it's time for attendance, so let's get attendance done. So it is 929 Java 1. Okay, just got attendance done. So it looks like everybody is pretty much an understanding of how to do these assignments. So I guess that's it for today. So see you on Monday. Okay, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.